and uh, J.P. Morgan was uh, dealing with the uh, uh, past law. They had to have because there was no uh, way of measuring meter. the... Uh, can't put a meter on it, I don't want yeah. it. He says, uh, <laughs> I can't put a meter on it, I don't want it. Yeah, well, that wasn't his biggest problem at the, at the time. The problem was is the fact that he couldn't control who was receiving it more than anything else because he, he could take a contract with you, for instance, and he could sign it. But the, the biggest thing about J.P. Morgan and Tesla, from my reading so far, um, is that um, J.P. Morgan owned all the power lines in the United States. And he didn't need power lines for this energy. And so he made his money by transmission of electricity, not by anything else. Well, that's what I mean. But he could he couldn't put a meter on it. He couldn't control who received it, and more importantly, he couldn't use his power lines to transmit it. His grid's been obsolete. So his grid's obsolete, and he went obsolete with the, with the DC power system once. He didn't want to go obsolete so again. Is, is there anyone developed a scalar wave meter of any kind? No, it, it, I've never seen one measure. I have I have meters that will pick up how strong the scalar wave field is. We can walk to and from it, and you'll see how strong the signal is. But no, not the quantity of it. No, no, you need you need a Abramanko plug um, to to pick it up. So, okay, well let's move on to the next part of his demonstration. It actually is much better to do it in the back room, in the dark. Uh, let's talk about it here for just before we get too carried away. What do you plug it in? What did you plug it in? You plug the coil back in. <laughs> you, and then he energized the coil. Oh, sorry. I plugged the wrong one. I'll just leave it off the second. I'll just explain what it is out here before we go in the room. Okay. So what we have here is a bottle of wine, Drantum, uh, eight gauge wire wrapped around the coil, and a uh, roll of paper with one wire in the middle, <coughs> soaked in beeswax. Now, Tesla says experimenting with high frequency and high voltage coils with and without his treatment to the, to the, the coil is like doing high frequency with, with um, solid iron core transformers. Low frequency, no problem. High frequency, you need laminated or even micro, micro particle transformers. He said that if you were to experiment with this tech, um, coils and did not use his process to treat the coil, even if he built it exactly the way he said and did not treat it with his wax process, it would be like playing with this with a, sol a high frequency with a solid um, iron core for high frequency and you just don't get results. Now the funny thing about it is, is everybody does that. Nobody treats the coil. I've, in his book here, he went to uh, about a whole chapter on how to treat the coils. I'll summarize it into two steps. First step is to wind it in a paper form and I don't use plastic, use paper that can absorb wax. Second step is to put it in a vacuum chamber, and, and he says, a modern vacuum of 29 and a half inches. And I said, what? <laughs> we live in 29.8 inches of standard uh, pressure. We're, he's talking almost a space vacuum here. No, he said, a modern vacuum, so later, that was a good clue to later on, he said a hard vacuum, he's talking like vacuum. So he said, a modern vacuum, 29.5 inches of mercury. And then you heat the device up to at least one and a half times the melting point of the wax. And then you introduce liquid wax into the vacuum. And then, to make life just interesting, he said 30 psi pressure on applied to all the tools. <laughs> Put 30 psi pressure onto the coil while you cool the wax. So I said, like, not only do you have to build a device that's going to be vacuum, got to heat it. Now I've got to have it so it can handle pressure, 30 psi. You know, that's not exactly easy to do. Well, I've achieved it. Good old American pressure cooker. <laughs> so anyways, and I had to get special vacuum pumps and to pull out the vacuum. So anyways, this is actually not made with that. This is one of the pre ones. I was not at home with this um, before the conference started. I was actually down in Florida for a couple months. I uh, was working full time for this on this research, and then my funding got cut due to economics, and so I went and took a job in Florida temporarily here. And uh, so my stuff was up in Canada. Michelle, a good friend of mine, lives only a few hours away, went to my house, picked up all the stuff, and brought it down so we can show you guys. So I, I didn't get everything here. Yeah.
So Tesla talks about not only impregnating the secondary in wax, he said the primary is just as important. And the capacitors, he goes into a complete chapter saying the same basic thing, says if you don't do it in vacuum packing it, it is ineffective, up to 80% inefficient. He builds this coil here, and I have in the drawings here, he builds this coil here. It'll do a bigger, it'll make a 12 inch arc on eight watts of power. That's less than an LED. Yeah. You know? Okay, well, I, we're not there today. Uh, in fact, I've only met one other guy that I worked with, and he's got 20, down to 25 watts to do the same thing. We're getting close, but we're not there yet. Tesla is miles ahead of us in this. It's ridiculous. You know? And, uh, and he talks about watts, uh, and he uses watts and amps in his books. He does not just talk about the effect, he talks specifics. He talks about how to make the wax. He doesn't say just use wax. He says, take one part this, one part that, one part that, bring it to a boil for one hour, get the gas, put it in a vacuum, and it goes on and on and on. What to do. <laughs> That's awesome. So the guy knew what he's talking about. You know, He spent a lot of time on it. We need to study, if we want to study this stuff, just tinkering will get you there maybe. Why don't we just read what Tesla says? Follow his tracks. Take the shortcut and follow what he says to do. And that's what I've been trying to do and learn stuff. And it's interesting. So what I got here is uh, two bathroom floats from you know, 1940, 50 type vintage. There's a capacitor in the middle. So they are, it's a gigantic capacitor. A hole like this, my hand actually feels funny while it's running because the capacitance charge is noticeable. The first thing I really found interesting about a Tesla coil, now I've run DC and AC coil. This is an AC coil. So an AC coil running, making a spark, and there's not a very big spark in this one, but it does make a spark. You would expect an AC field. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, on an AC coil. That's what I thought. The purpose of this is to prove that it's not. The hole looks like this. This will charge to, you know, 40, 50,000 volts across it and maintain it. So what's happening is that there is the coil is absorbing energy from the environment. And why I went with the room in the dark is because you'll see it flowing to the coil. You cannot see that in light. You need to be dark. Your eyes got to adjust. And you'll see. I don't know how to even describe it, but it's like a cat's tail between the body and the coil, and it'll flow to the coil. We can. Sh we have. I'll take. I've tried it in the room. We will not see the effect of it in the dark. We need to go into the room here and do it in the dark. Well, let's talk about it when we get in the room because it's hard to talk in the dark. I take a, a piece of wire. This is just a piece of high voltage wire, 15,000 volt rating on it. This is a 5,000 volt transformer stepping it up to high voltage. You'll see my hand glowing in the, in, with the, through the wire. There's, the wire is, is not hooked up to the other end and it'll draw sparks. So it's, a, it's not completing the circuit to ground. This is completing the circuit to a piece of metal in the sky. Okay? So there, it's interesting how this works and this works. The Crooks tube, right here, the last time we got it, will spin in vicinity of the coil. And there's no light. People talk about these being run on the sunlight, a lamp light. There is no light here. We can already see this thing running. And it will spin up in vicinity of this coil because the radiant energy particles are rushing to the coil. Not away, <laughs> but to the coil. So you'll pick up the flow of it in it. Um, 